Today, we're breaking down one of the most powerful AI tools out there, Leonardo AI. This isn't just another image generator. It's like having an entire creative studio on your laptop. You can make professional level art, animations, and even game assets just by typing a prompt. So here's the plan. I'm gonna show you everything you need to actually use Leonardo and get insane results. One of the coolest things about it is that you can keep your characters consistent across different scenes. No more random faces or style changes when you're building out a story or a brand. And if you stick around until the end, I'm gonna show you how to take the jaw-dropping images that Leonardo gives you and transform them into real videos that are seriously next level. Let's get into it. All right, so this is Leonardo AI. Imagine if Photoshop, Mid Journey, and After Effects had a baby. This is that baby. All right, so let's start with the beginning. Let's click on images. They have the legacy models and the main models are the most used ones. Okay, but having models is one thing. What makes Leonardo stand out is the amount of control that it gives you. Let me give you an example. Let's use their main model, which is Lucid Origin. So there are multiple ways we can start creating. Let's just give it a random prompt. Blonde female playing ping pong on a London bridge. You can select a prompt enhancement, which I highly recommend you to do. You can also disable it. Generation mode can be fast or ultra. Fast will give you a fast response. Ultra will give you a much more detailed response and costs double the money. You can select the image dimensions, the size of the image, and the number of images. Let's go with eight images because we really want to pick one that we like. As you can see right here, we have eight generations that are pending. There you go, blonde female playing ping pong on the London Bridge. It looks absolutely stunning. Now, further on, there's multiple ways we could work with this. We could change individual photos or we could just change all of them. Let's say make the tank top black. And there you go, the tank top is black. Let's say we like this one and we wanna do some changes on it. Click on the three dots, click edit with AI and type your instruction here. Put a knife in her hand instead of the ping pong palette. You can generate eight variations or you can just stick with one. Let's do eight. And there you go, we have the knife. Now you might notice that we don't have the same character at throughout all of these examples. That's because the model that we're using, which is Lucid Origin, is not quite the best for character consistency. So what you need to do if you want character consistency is to choose a different model, such as Phoenix 1.0. Once you select that, you'll notice that if you click on this icon right here, you can now select character reference. So let's click on that, take our picture, upload it here, put a knife in her hand and change the background to the Eiffel Tower. Let's click generate. Now, as you can see right here, because of the fact that we use a different model, which is Phoenix 1.0, we now have character consistency consistency. All of these pictures are with the same person, right? Now using the same logic, swap the knife with a soccer ball and the background to Times Square, New York. Generate and there you go. We have the same person in Times Square, New York holding a soccer ball instead of a knife. This is how you can play with character consistency and this is where Leonardo is shining. Next up, let's see how it does with a real person, which is me. Let's use this picture of myself for character reference. There you go. This is me wearing a suit. As you can see, character consistency is pretty awesome on point, this looks, I would say 90% like me in that picture. The thing is that you need to set the character reference to high and for the generation mode, select ultra quality. Now what we're gonna do next, we're gonna test their main models for image generation. So the top ones are Lucid Origin, Lucid Realism, GPT Image 1 and Flux 1 Context and Phoenix 1.0. This is the prompt that we're gonna use to generate the images for all of the models. Generation mode, ultra, 16.9, large. Let's go with eight images and let's click generate. Now the first one is with Lucid Origin, let's do the same thing with Lucid Realism, GPT Image 1, Flux Context, and Phoenix. All right, let's check them one by one. So the first one is Lucid Origin. Let's zoom in on the details. The people look good. This chick has a beard for some reason. Actually, let me go back. Why are there two girls? I gave it a prompt for a couple, not two girls and a guy. <laughs> the next photo, they gave us an actual couple and one sad, lonely lady sitting inside. Still looks good. This, I I, I don't understand. They, they kind of messed up the faces here. They understand the concept concepts, but I mean, look at the faces. The faces are kind of distorted. They're not very good with faces. And if you zoom in on the details, you can kind of see the flaws. Next up, we have Lucid Realism. Looks stunning. Same problem with the faces. And right here we have what it appears to be two girls and another person. What is this? Also this one, this one, another guy with a chick and unknown creature. All right, GPT Image 1, uh, they have the same problem, but besides the fact that they are distorted, it has nothing to do with reality. Like, I, I really don't like this one. For example, check this out. In what reality would this be a thing? How could you build something like this, first of all? And second of all, why would they just sit there and watch nothing while the sun is there? It's not so intuitive. Let's see, Flux, looking good though. I mean, if you're not looking at the faces, all of them look pretty good, but I think that so far, this one is the most stunning. And finally, we have Leonardo Phoenix 1, which generated this guy with two glasses of something, and one of the glasses is on its leg, and whoa, what is this? So far, it seems to me that Lucid Realism 
mechanism is a bit better than the others. Let's try a different one. Let's try cabin and the woods with a pickup truck parked in front. Happy couple smiling at the camera. I specifically included happy couple because I want to give it another chance with people. Let's generate it. And let's check it out. I think that this looks a hundred times better. I think that when you put the focus on the people, it will give you much better results. Look at these guys. I mean, they are much better than the first versions. And I think that that is because of the fact that we're putting the focus on the people and not on the scenery and we're not giving them so many details. And if we're going to put the focus even closer to the person, let's not give it that many details. Close up of a man in his 80s smiling. Let's generate. Yeah, I think I was right. This looks very, very good. Even character consistency looks very good, but you will not see this gentleman having three years or distorted eyes. The more focus you put on the person, the better it will look. Next up, let me show you flow state. Let's use the same exact prompt that we first use. Click generate. Now, what is this going to do is it will generate an infinite number number of variations, all of them vastly different, different styles, different colors, different techniques of creation. You can infinitely scroll and you will see all of these concepts that are made based on your initial prompt. Now, let's say that you like one of these prompts. Let's say we like this one. Okay. So all you have to do is press on more like this. And once you press it, it will generate more images that have similar features to the base image. So as you can see right now, all of the generated images are similar in style with the first one, which we clicked on more like this. You can narrow this even further by clicking on more like this again. For example, let's say I don't like this. They are kind of sitting on a cliff. I don't like this one because it's this guy alone with nobody to keep him company. But let's say I like this one because it has some vegetation. It has some flowers in there. If I click more like this, it will take into consideration all of the things that made that picture and it will include all of the details in the future generations. And finally, I want to show you the upscaler, which is one of the best upscalers out there on the market, in my opinion. You find it here on the homepage. All you have to do is click on it. We're going to drag and drop an image that we like. Upscaling is basically increasing the number of pixels in one image. So we have legacy and ultra. I'm going to show you both, but let's start with ultra. Upscale multiplier and upscale strength. Let's put it to ultra. You have some advanced settings here if you want to play with the creativity, details, and similarity. Let's click upscale and it looks something like this. I mean, look at these guys before the upscale and after the upscale. Looking much better. The problem is that character consistency is not on point. They do look better, but they are kind of different people, right? In order to fix that, you can play with similarity, drag it to the maximum and creativity, drag it to the minimum, meaning that you're not going to leave it room to play with creativity and you want striking similarity. Upscale and applying this, it will look much, much more similar than the original, as you can see right here. And the legacy model is double the tokens, 60 instead of 33. And in my opinion, it's not as good as ultra. The only thing is that you don't have that many things to play with as you would in ultra. And the result looks something like this. Next up, I want to show you something cool. On their homepage, you can see the community creation. So you can scroll down forever and you're gonna see what other people have created. Let's say you really like something. Let's say we really like this image. You can see the prompt that this other user wrote in order to achieve this image and you can play around with it. You can click on the image and write your own prompt. Make it two whales instead of one. And there you go. You have two whales instead of one. And no, they are not copy paste. They are different whales. Another thing you can do if you like an image, you can just click on remix and it's going to add the prompt that this other user had so you can use your very own settings. Let's do large eight images ultra and let's go with lucid realism this is mostly if you really like something else and you don't have inspiration but you want to have your own twist to that thing and there you go this is the end result and you can play with it from this moment forward let's say introduce a hand that's grabbing the boombox from outside of the water hand is submerged in the water up until the elbow and there you go we have the exact same result that we wanted now here's the part that blows people away leonardo is not limited to just images with their brand new motion tool and the ability to integrate vo3 you can literally Literally turn any image that I showed you into an amazing, mind-blowing video. So the way you're gonna do that directly from the image that you like is just click on this button, generate video. First of all, we're gonna give it a natural language prompt. The hand is pulling the boombox out of the water. Select the model. Let's go with motion 2.0. Mission control, we're gonna play with this in a while. You can select the way you want the camera to show the action. And motion element is basically, you can select the style of the video. You can go with fast or with quality. Let's keep quality and let's have two videos. Guys, I'm absolutely mind blown by this. Look at this. The hand is pulling the boombox out of the water in slow motion. And the other result looks a bit smoother. Do you remember when we used this model, Phoenix 
1.0 in order to create similar versions of ourselves. Let's do that again. Let me show you something. Let's select Phoenix 1.0. Let's click character reference, select a picture of myself, dress me up in a green suit and give me a twirly mustache. There you go. Let's go with this one. So now let's go back to the homepage and let's click on video. So the way video generation works the best is if you select the first frame of a video, let's just do starting frame, upload the desired picture. This is going to be the starting frame of your video. And let's give it a prompt. The person is sitting at a table having a cup of tea. I don't know why, but I feel like this outfit would go perfect with a cup of tea. Let's select the quality to 720p. Let's select two videos and let's click generate. And as you can see right here, even for the videos, the prompt enhance is on automatic. So they enhanced my prompt. All right, so this is the result. The cup of tea is uh, pretty, pretty weird, I would say. I'm not drinking the cup of tea, but character consistency looks good. The movements are correct. So what I can try to do is to change the model to VO3. VO3 is much more advanced when we're talking about things like details. Let's go with high quality and generate a video from the same exact input. Now, Google VO3 is usually better. The problem is that it's much pricier. This video costs 2,500 credits as opposed to 250 credits for the other ones. So it's basically 10 times more expensive. And there you go, this is the result. I mean, it definitely looks stunning. There's nothing I can comment bad about it. Only thing that's missing is the glasses. And just to give you another clear comparison between different models of video generation from images, I uploaded a picture of myself again, and the prompt was make myself drive an Audi A8 2024. This is what their base model, their 250 credit model did. Basically nothing, it's just me showing a small head movement and they kind of nailed the, the, the car. It looks pretty decent, I would say. The interior is very spot on, the, the gear shifter, the chair looks good, the steering wheel, but everything is pretty much low quality. This on the other side is the same generation, same prompt, but with VO3. This is myself driving the Audi A8 and as you can see, the motion looks amazing. I look amazing. Everything is pretty much spot on and look at the head movement as well. You see my head is moving, keeping character consistency. This is clear proof that VO3 is much superior to anything on the market right now. And before we finish, Leonardo has another ace up its sleeve and that is real-time generation. I absolutely love playing with this. All you have to do is click on this button right here, real-time generation, and just write what you want. Dog on a leash in Central Park. Sunrise in the forest. There you go. Ferrari speeding in Monaco. There you go. You can change the styles. So you can make it more as a kid's illustration if you want to. Let's say we really like coloring books so we can adjust this to a higher level and it's gonna look like a coloring book. Now about pricing, Leonardo has a free plan forever. You're gonna get 150 fast tokens per day, access to community models and basic settings. That is perfect if you're just experimenting. And this is how their pricing looks like. You can start at $12 per month, $30 for the medium one and $60 for the unlimited one. And of course you can always buy tokens. So guys, that's Leonardo AI, a creative super tool that lets anyone go from their idea to polished art animations and even game assets. If you're excited by what's possible here, hit that like button, subscribe to our channel if you want to get a notification when we are posting new stuff, and comment below what you would make with Leonardo. The best comment gets a pin to the top section. Also, don't forget to check out There's an AI for That, the biggest website for AI tools in the world, and also subscribe to our newsletter, joining close to 2 million people that have done the same. As always, thank you for watching, have an amazing day, until next time, bye-bye.